competition on the court. On the line, so making the most of their chances. And last season, 77% from the line. They could usually get the job done there. When you think of half court offenses in general, Greg, how critical is ball and player movement to a team's success? Kevin, unless you have incredible isolation scores, it's essential. Even then, keeping the defense rotating and reacting is the best way to create open looks and offensive rebound opportunities. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Down low, Turner, and it's Turner finishing it off. Talk about execution on the offensive end. They're leaving nothing on the table right now. It's caused them to pull away a bit. Let's see if they can keep the train on the tracks. And it's blocked, and he keeps control of the ball. The pass to Matherin. There's 53 seconds left here in the second. Crops in the layup for two. He has 35. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. And that was the mobile one drive. Well worth a second look. And despite the double-digit lead, still in attack mode, getting their feet wet there in the paint. Pulls it from the elbow. Rebounded by Jackson. You cannot play worse offensively, although he's trying. And he hasn't made one shot yet. I feel for him. Goes back up. And it's good on the way in. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. Three seconds separate the shot clock and game clock. Dinwiddie passes to Thomas. Back to Dinwiddie. They can't stop the run with that one. This is the definition of forcing it. He's trying to get himself going, but taking tough shots just won't do it. Back to McConnell. This one for three, sinks the three-pointer. McConnell's got his second basket of the night. And so it's Indiana with a massive lead of 30 points here at the end of the quarter. A look at the field goal percentage numbers tells the story of what tough defense they're... Well, right now for Indiana, They've been incredible out the gates. You could see this coming. We talked about this, and the way they prepared for the season was tremendous. And keeping things moving, what a tremendous first half performance for the Indiana Pacers. Coach has to be loving the all around production. Each guy carrying his weight. That's a luxury to have, and it's fun to watch. Yeah, total team effort tonight. Thank you for being with us. Now let's send it to Kevin Harlan for the second half tip. And welcome back to the second half of our Halloween broadcast. So it's Dinwiddie with it. He'll bring it up for the Brooklyn Nets. They'll be playing host to Chicago for their next game. That will complete this four-game homestand. On the court right now for the Pacers. They've got Halliburton. Buddy Heald is out there with Smith. And there's Miles Turner. And he uses the glass on the layup. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. And guys, to go on a big run, get some breathing space, it has to be a great play on each end. Here's Dinwiddie. No oh, good with the triple. The fadeaway, and he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Well, part of their game plan was to block out the noise and just stay focused. Oh, yeah, they're doing a terrific job not giving this hostile crowd anything to cheer about. To the middle. It's going by heel. Now the Pacers moving it up. Uses the glass to finish the layup. 43 points in the game. 
three for three, and that's always a good way to start the second half. Dinwiddie outside. O'Neal is green on heel. Bridges right side. Five on the clock to the inside. And it's slammed in by Bridges. And on the slam, Bridges using the vertical to finish strong before the D can contest. And the basket is good. When you allow good scorers to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. That's a great possession. Put your best players in a position to succeed. Johnson with the bounce pass. Bridges passes to Johnson. Dinwiddie against Halliburton. Dinwiddie's shot is off. For Indiana, they've gone four for four from the field since the halftime break. Terrific start to the third quarter. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. Nine feet out, and again, it's Indiana. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets. Brooklyn's gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Indiana foul, number seven. First no, foul. don't let him get away First with that team. clear foul. Great call. Nice ball movement by Brooklyn. Johnson kicks to Bridges. O'Neal from long range. Hits it from three-point range. O'Neal's got five now. He can really stroke it from deep. You have to keep better tabs on him. O'Neal against Smith. And it's Royce O'Neal with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Called the Nets. Simmons looking around. Back to Dinwiddie. Pass to Finney Smith. Here's Dinwiddie. Simmons, a screen on McConnell. Dinwiddie outside for Thomas. And again, it's the Nets missing. Indiana's gone into a slump here from three-point range, shooting just one of five here in the third. Trying his luck from deep. He got it again. Sensation. My goodness, 50 for the game. Yep, he is putting on a show. And he banks in the way. Thomas got his second basket. Nah, he's just ridiculous. He's just an absolute surgeon when he has the ball. This man is surgical. There is no way to slow him down when he wants to score. Yeah, there's six points on consecutive three balls. They're finding holes now in the D. Simmons passes to Thomas. That doesn't go either for Thomas. Indiana's gone three of seven from three-point range here in quarter number three. Mora, that's good. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Dinwiddie against McConnell. Takes a step back. Now here's Dinwiddie. He's covered by McConnell. Thomas, no luck. The Pacers shooting 59% up to this point. They're working for great shots, and they're hitting them. Let's it fly. And the Pacers tack on two more. He found his groove right away and hasn't let up. It's not surprising that he's leading the way on offense. Now, here's Thomas. He has five. Can they get it? 
And that's going to do it. Some good defense down the stretch to end the quarter. And so it's Indiana with a huge... And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. They've got Joe Harris, and it's Finney Smith in at the four slot. So that's the lineup for Brooklyn. Count the basket. Well, he's been doing it all night. Why not go back to him? Yeah, just keep feeding him. That guy is a man on a mission. And the defense, well, they don't have much of an answer. Here's Watanabe, defended by Tice. Six to shoot, the three for Mills. He's off on that one, so Indiana will take it the other way. And another one! And he's been dominant here thus far. Shouldering the offense, GA really taking it to the opposition. One of the biggest changes in the NBA since I started broadcasting back in the early 80s, player movement, Richard. Guys switching teams all the time. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for the NBA? I think for players, it's great because you have more mobility. You have a chance to change your environment and revitalize you. For the fans, I understand. Probably not so much because really, they connect to these players, especially when you draft them or they're a part of an epic year or a championship. You just hate to see those players go. So there's two sides to it. And I bet as a player, knowing you as I do, you probably enjoy the challenge of trying to reassert yourself, find out where you could best help your new team. Yes, and you enjoy your new role. I've been in roles where I was expected to be a leading scorer. I've also been in a role where I was expected to mentor Kawhi Leonard, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes. All those guys were drafted at my time in Golden State. And this offense is in a perfect rhythm, and you can see how they're finishing their plays. Right about that. Seems like they haven't missed. Watanabe passes to Mills. No good, unable to end this run. Pacers have gone a perfect 4-4 four four to start the final quarter. Can't ask for anything more than that. Pass to Tice. And again, it's Indiana converting. Another bucket down low. They've been the aggressors taking the ball inside and attacking at the rim. Mills passes to Sumner. Just a little under two and a half minutes have passed now here in the fourth. Offensive rebound. And Finney Smith gets it to go. And with that one, it ends an 11-0 run by Indiana. We know, Greg, the league trending towards small ball, but some teams are having success playing two bigs up front. And I think the key is having versatile big men. If they can space the floor and play in space, also be able to cover smaller players, why not get the added rebounding and rim protection? Passes to Noro. Harris on the double team. And wrestling for it there, but no one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. Positions often court cut. How does the NBA engage that audience? Kevin, I think making game action trend on social media and when big moments happen for a, maybe a small fee, allow people to be a part of it. It's like highlights, but live. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. And here's the break. Goes up. Another bucket. Wow. And this game has his name written all over it. Greg, he's been phenomenal. An offensive onslaught. Out to the right wing. Watanabe passes to Mills. And again, no good by Brooklyn. And if they want to mount a comeback here, they need him to get going. It's just that simple. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. Yeah, that's nice execution. Running with purpose and creating an easy scoring opportunity off the break. Mills dishes to Harris. Watanabe passes to Harris. The three from Mills. 
It's rebounded by Indiana. And, and maybe, you know, he thinks he can shoot himself out of the cold spell, but I don't think that's the case. Maybe somebody want to tell him to ease up off the threes. And Tice gets it to go. Oh. And defensively, they are on their heels every time the ball comes inside. And here's Mills.
shot to stop the run. It's rebounded by Neesmith. Neesmith has got five rebounds tonight. And for coaches' challenges, the refs review their own call. It's a little like grading your own test. Maybe, Greg, give that job to the review center. You, you definitely risk a confirmation bias, and, and everyone wants to be right. It, it does seem like some calls stand that probably could be reversed. Here's Mills, and the rebound goes to the Pacers. Juarez got rebound number five here tonight. And this is the type of game you just throw away as a player. He has yet to score a point and looks completely flustered. Yeah, the chemistry has been terrific. Really impressed with their offensive execution. Sumner kicks to Finney Smith. Now the pass to Mills. Here's Sumner. The way up missed. No matter what looks they get, they just can't convert to stop this run. This is snowballing for them. They've got to get a good look next time down. And the layup's good off the glass. And we're seeing some great ball movement out of this group, guys. And so it's Mills who will bring it up for the Nets. Indiana Power. Some changes for Brooklyn. Nicholas Claxton's checked in for Watsonabe. O'Neal comes in for Dorian Finney-Smith. And it's Seth Curry in for Patty Mills. Harris inside. Five to shoot. A shot by Curry. No good. Indiana's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. It's stolen by Curry. In the corner, O'Neal with it. Trying to end the drought. Duarte grabs the board. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. And player nicknames are a fun part of covering the game. Second official foul. Just going with their initials, like KD or AD or Pete. Number seven. Do we need more creativity? I don't know, Kevin. Maybe the league could give guys a cash bonus for picking a nickname. Uh, initials excluded. Uh, that might spark some creativity. Looking at who's out there now for the Nets. Johnson comes in for Joe Harris. And Thomas subbed in for Edmund Sumner. Basket counts. That's a blue collar bucket right there. Grown man basket. Put it in the work. Got a second chance to score. And good! There's another. What a game. That's 72 points. He's been simply, Greg, sensational throughout this one. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Thomas passes to Claxton. Connects again. He is simply unconscious here tonight. Nobody can stop him right now. GA, the points keep coming, and he's climbing up that scoring ladder. Third on the list, well in sight. And Will Chamberlain holds both the first and third place scoring marks. First, of course, for 100 points, and third place all time with 78. Anytime Wilt's name comes up, you are making history. Here's Norrell, guarded by O'Neal. Six on the shot clock. And yes, it's good. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Outside Thomas. Pass to Curry. Inside. Marvelous lead pass, and he throws it down. Whoa, that'll wake you up. He is such a great athlete. By the looks of it, the Hall of Fame class of 2023, Richard, should be loaded. A lot of big names could be headed to Springfield, Massachusetts. And another one falls. Amazing. And that puts him even for third on the single game scoring list. Simply amazing. I I'm at a loss for words. Greg, his has been one of the greatest offensive games we'll ever see. And, of course, 78 points, the mark that Wolf Chamberlain had over five decades. Ago. And got it! Another basket! 
he has been simply unstoppable. And he's now third all-time for points in a game. One for the agents. Well, he has already cleared Wilt Chamberlain's 78 points. Next up is Kobe's 81. And if he passes that mark, the basketball world is going to be talking about this guy for years. Driving inside, yet another bucket. And that score moves him up in the record books yet again. He now stands, Greg, alone for second place for points. What an unbelievable night. To think that he has eclipsed Kobe's mark of 81 and now has his sights set on 100, this is a game you'll be talking about for decades. And since halftime, he has just been ice cold, just can't seem to get anything to go his way. And Thomas over to help. One, two minutes to play. For Indiana moving the ball around. Here's Nora, and the Pacers another three. Three. So many of the plays they're running designed to create opportunities from deep. With the way they're shooting, there's no need to look for any other shot. Just keep letting it rain. Curry finds Thomas. There's a minute 40 left in the fourth quarter. Indiana's gotten off to a great start from three-point range in the final quarter. They're a perfect three of three. Pass to Neesmith. And for a lot of up-and-coming teams, getting better defensively is the key to reaching, Greg, that next level. That being considered, what's the first step in that improvement? A lot of times it's bringing in a great defender, like a Pat Beverly or an Andre Iguodala, a defensive anchor who also inspires his teammates to take that challenge. Here's Thomas to end the run. Claxton gets it to drop, and now he's shooting at a 5 for 8 clip. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it, just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for Indiana. This was a team was the capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many... On the other side, one that I think most will try to forget. And with this effort tonight, grabbing their eighth win of the year. And once the horn sounds, they're going to go up 2-0 in the season series. The Pacers making a switch here. Jackson's checked in. Curry with it. Guarded now by Jackson. Claxton no good. 32 seconds left in the fourth. To the paint. Passes it to Nemar. And foul on the shot. For a while. Third personal foul. Third team foul. And he makes the first. The Pacers. Number seven. Got the line with two shots. That one falls, so he hits both of them. There's 25 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Thomas with it. There's the pass to Curry. There's 10 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Just five on the clock. Offensive rebound. And they've won the rebound battle so far, and it's translated to the scoreboard. They set a physical tone early on, and they're being rewarded for their efforts. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. They're up. Three seconds left in the game. Guys, what do you think? And they've got this one just about wrapped up. Also, we've seen some wild finishes in our time. You can't afford to lose focus for just one second. So no problem for Indiana as they get the win. This one was over well before the final buzzer. The fans were waiting for something to get excited about, Greg, but they never got it. They sure didn't. I mean, they just rolled to this win. They made it look really easy. What an efficient performance at both ends. And that'll do it, folks. This is Kevin Harlan saying thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.